All right, this is Medical Properties Trust. The last analysis I did on this thing was about seven or nine months ago. Um, it was in uh, 2022. I believe it was the second quarter, uh, but I could be wrong about that. Either way, um, been wanting to get to this uh, for quite some time now. Uh, I'll tell you right away that I was wrong on the cash. Um, in that video, I predicted cash at 150 and uh, it turned out uh, to be 235. So um, I knew that the cash was going to drop, but didn't. Um, I thought it was going to drop a lot more than what it did. However, with that being said, um, I was still um, fairly close uh, in my prediction. Um, I predicted um, something like... Um, I want to say the the net was yeah the net was ten million and the actual number came out to be eight million so you know uh, it was a difference um, not a huge difference in the grand scheme of things um, the one thing I was right about uh, was the fact that the high for 2022 was 24 dollars it had already reached that uh, my prediction was for 25 dollars and now that we know in hindsight that uh, my prediction was two million over as far as the net uh, 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 balance sheet um, uh, goes, balance sheet value goes. Uh, it makes sense why I got that extra dollar in there. Uh, but I, I knew that it wasn't going to get back to that that twenty four dollars, and it did not. Um, the one thing that I did not predict, however, was just how low uh, the price to book uh, value would go. Um, I thought that, you know, maybe $16, $15, right, um, to keep it at a price to book of a dollar, but uh, that didn't happen. Currently, right now, there is about a 20% short interest um, on Medical Properties Trust. I just want to cue that up here. Um, that is a huge number. There's a lot of people that's betting on this stock to fall. Um, and so far, they've made a lot of money doing that. Uh, the dividend right now, as you can see, uh, as of today, um, is roughly 13%, which is a crazy number. And the idea is that at some point, they're going to cut the dividend, the price is going to fall uh, even further. Or we're going to see a short squeeze, and then the price is going to skyrocket to the top. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about... Uh, what that may look like. Uh, just for comparison, here's their, their competitor uh, that's basically doing the same thing, except they're doing it only in the US and not necessarily worldwide like uh, MPW. And, and their short interest is only two to 3%. So huge, huge difference. Uh, I think a lot of what's going on and what has always gone on uh, with medical properties is that uh, typically, the deals that they they make, uh, the reason why this company even exists is to provide liquidity to their clients, right, which are hospitals. Those hospitals uh, need cash, and so they sell their building, the hospital building, to Medical Properties Trust, and a Medical Properties Trust, in turn, charges those hospitals rent, lease, what have you. Now... What that means is, is that you can skip out on paying your rent or your lease and good luck trying to evict a hospital, right? I mean, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really a beneficial uh, situation for the hospital, um, but it's also beneficial for Medical Properties Trust because obviously uh, they're going to make more money on the rent than uh, if they were to, uh, you know, be in the business of, of selling the, these properties, okay? And so uh, they're basically a financial firm is, is what they are. But the idea is, is that a lot of the companies that they deal with are in financial trouble already, which is why they even go to Medical Properties Trust. And once they're in financial trouble, they don't pay their rent. Medical Properties Trust loses out on money and so forth. Um, just real quick, I want to show what the price has done over the last three years. Um, this was the low back in 2020, $12. Uh, then we have a high of 24, that's 100% return. 
2021, the low was 19 uh, and the high was 23. That's, uh, I don't know, 20, 30% return. And then uh, in 2022, which is what I did not think was going to happen, the price got down to $9.90. And then, of course, there's the high of $24. Again, we're talking about more than 100% return, maybe 150% return, something crazy like that. Um, the other thing I want to go ahead and mention now, too, uh, is this price to book ratio. OK, um, the price to book ratio, what it does is it takes the net value of the company, meaning it takes what the company owns minus what they owe. Right. And then divides it by the number of shares. OK, so um, the price to book um, in 20. 20 at its very lowest price right was one dollar uh and 11 cents or one times um the the book value meaning that the stock price traded for exactly what the company was worth or at least a little more than what the company is worth which is normal right at the very highest at 24 dollars, the company traded for two times uh what the book value is which is you know really high but again that's the highest price that it reached that year and so we see the same thing in 2021 uh the stock price got down to 1.4 times uh the net value of the the balance sheet and then it got up to as high as 1.7 um and then in 2022 it got all the way down to 0.71 and it got up as high as 172. currently right now uh, we're looking at uh, a book value. I actually don't have this uh, queued up. Let me do it up here. Uh oh. like I'm doing this wrong. I have to double check myself. That's got to be wrong. It's 16, 14. I think I got it right. Let's see. 16, 21, 14. 16, 14. Yeah, so right now, uh, the price to book is 0. 0.62, meaning that the stock price is worth almost half of what the actual value of the company were, meaning that if the company were to sell everything that they owned and pay it off all of their debt, um their their stock prices is, is half of that right and the only reason why that would ever happen is if there's someone out there that thinks that the assets that the company currently owns are actually worth less than half of what they're currently um booked at right or the liabilities are possibly like double what they actually are right um now what I've done is is to to try to keep this thing uh, conservative. Is I did not include any sort of intangibles. Okay, um, I do want to quickly. Let me see. I don't have that queued up. Uh, but anyway, I didn't I didn't include any intangibles. Another thing uh, that I did not do um, are these other assets. Okay, now I did include the corporate assets, the prepaid assets. 
uh, and some of the uh, investments, uh, the derivative assets that you see here, that's it, that's in this number. But the debt issue cost, I did not include that. And what that is, is anytime that they uh, issue debt, um, there's a cost for doing that, right? So if they decide they want to issue, you know, a, a loan uh, to someone and they want 10% interest, let's just say, right? Uh, well, there's costs um, to, to, to do that. Um, but they don't pay those costs right away. And so what they do is they actually book those costs as an asset and then later on they expense them. So I did not include that as an asset because it's not a real asset. Uh, it's, it's, it's an accounting thing uh, that really has no bearing on the operation uh, or the, the cash flow really of the company. If anything, it takes cash away uh, from the company. So didn't include that. Uh, and like I said, I didn't include intangibles, which um, I thought was, was really weird. The intangibles that they have uh, were literally booked as the relationship that they have with the hospitals that they're renting to. That's ridiculous. Uh, again, it's an accounting thing. It's a tax thing. Um, I, also, I did not include any sort of uh, depreciation or amortization because again, those aren't real things, right? There's just accounting things uh, that do affect the actual financial statements and do affect the actual numbers uh, when they're reporting, but it doesn't affect, again, the actual cash flow or the operation of the company. So with all that said, right, um, the book value is currently at 0.6. So what I wanted to do um, is do a uh, basically um, I call this a bankruptcy check, right? It's just looking and saying, okay, what happens if we did actually decrease um, the assets by half, okay? And so what you're looking at is a conservative uh, estimate here. This is assuming, this is based on the 2022 numbers that they reported, okay? These are no predictions. This is just what they reported. If we reduce their assets by half and we increase their liabilities by half, uh, then they are in fact insolvent, okay? Another thing um, that I wanted to note here um, is that uh, looking at the dividend, because this is something that again has come up quite a bit right now because the dividend is so high, is whether or not they'll have to cut the dividend. And if they cut the dividend, the stock price is gonna fall even further. Don't see that happening. Uh, even if the profits were to fall by 50%, this company can still pay um, their dividend just with profits alone. Just with profits alone, right? They can cover their dividend, no problem. If we see a 25% hit, they're covering their, their dividend payments almost double. And then currently right now, the net profit is covering the dividends by double. So, um, no problems there. And again, these are net profits uh, without talking about uh, amortization and depreciation. And that's what makes the big difference because when they actually report their financials, when they actually report the profit loss statement, it has the amortization and depreciation in there. And if you imagine, you're talking about a company whose business it is to buy a property, right? And then depreciate the hell out of it uh, to take advantage of all the tax benefits and things of that nature. Um, and offset their income from the rent that they're receiving. I mean, that's the way real estate works, right? So when they report their financials, the net profit, it's not really their net profit. Their net profit is actually a lot higher because depreciation and amortization do not exist, okay? Uh, even, even if you think about the fact that depreciation is supposed to capture the amount of money that you're going to spend on replacing broken items, repairing the building, things like that. Medical Properties Trust contracts with their uh, leaseholders um, and their lessees uh, that they take care of all the maintenance. They take care of all the repairs. Medical Properties Trust is not responsible for repairing any of those hospital buildings. The operators are. So that depreciation doesn't even, like it's it means nothing. It's just an accounting thing, uh, again, to reduce uh, the, the, the tax debt and to offset income. So, um, again, the, the dividend based on the net profit without all that stuff, 
it's being covered 200%. So they got the cash to cover the dividend. There's no reason to um, to decrease the dividend or, or cut it. The other thing is, and I said this in the last video, the, the CEO of Medical Properties Trust owns a lot of stock. He owns a lot of stock. And so that means his compensation is tied to the dividend, right? And so for him to cut the dividend means that he'll then be cutting his own paycheck. Now, the board of directors uh, do have also a say-so in, in what dividend gets paid and how it gets paid and, and, and whatnot, but the CEO sits on the board of directors. So the idea that the board is going to decide that, you know, the dividend needs to be cut even though they can pay the dividend with no problem, I just don't see it happening. Uh, anything is possible, but I really don't see it happening. So that that's number one. The dividend, as far as I'm concerned, is, is completely safe. Now, Again, they are insolvent if we cut everything by half. But like I said before, I also increase the liabilities uh, by half as well. So what I like to do is, is I like to uh, change that just to see what number we get here. All right. And so if we if we leave liabilities, you know, the same, right? We don't increase them or anything or reduce them. Um, still insolvent, okay? So that's not a great feeling, you know? Um, but again, we're talking about cutting the assets by half. I mean, that's a, that's a big number, right? Um, so again, not completely safe, but, um, but not, not horrible. All right. Now, if the assets take a 25% hit and we increase liabilities by 25%, they're still solvent. Right. And so, um, you know, if liabilities stayed the same and assets still took a 25% hit, these guys are more than, than OK, uh, not in any danger of going out of business anytime soon. All right. Let's go back to the price to book, because um, that's what this company trades on. Um, and that is uh, really what's in focus right now. Um, this is one of those things that is really difficult to teach. Um, and, um, you know, if you're if you're teaching a class on this stuff, right? Because book value per share, what that means is is that the value of the company divided by the number of shares is increasing over what is 10 years yeah it's increased over uh 10 years right it just goes up 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 and up and up and up and that means you have a growing company okay we do see that there is a small decline here uh last couple years but the price to book is way 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 down i mean compared to you know the small drop in the uh the book value uh the price the book is way down um and that has a lot to do with not only the short sellers um but i think sometimes it is it, it's it's how it's how you decide to to evaluate uh, a company Right. Uh, personally, like I said, I don't include depreciation, amortization. I don't include intangibles. Uh, there's a lot of things that I take out. Not everyone does that. And so if you're looking at just the financials without doing any kind of changes to them yourself, then, yeah, you might you might come across that stuff. The other thing is I, I didn't cue this up, but I, I'll talk about it anyway. Um, when Medical Properties Trust signs a lease agreement, OK, um, they book that revenue, meaning that if the lease agreement is for two years, right? By accounting standards, right? This is the way you have to do it, is you have to book that entire two years of revenue today, right? Now, what happens when um, that changes? What happens when, when a company can't pay, doesn't pay, or has some sort of financial trouble. Well, you have to impair um, 
the the asset or you have to um expense the um the um uh, the the rental loss okay um and they took a huge huge write down um just the past couple months on um on some hospitals out in uh Pennsylvania and so that was a huge hit to uh the net profit but again that's not a real cash expense it's not like they're actually spending uh, that money, right? It just means that they're not going to receive as much income as they thought they were going to receive. That's just really what it comes down to, right? Um, again, still has nothing to do with um, with actual cash out of their pocket. Not today, anyway. Um, the other thing I want to quickly go over um, is the hospitals. Um, that are in question right now, um, again, are in uh, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, out there on the East Coast. Um, Medical Property Trust has said this before uh, in their earnings calls, which are this business is a business of hospitals, right? And these hospitals that they have chosen to go into business with are hospitals that are are valuable and they're needed by the community. Okay, uh, this particular hospital in Pennsylvania chose uh, to close their doors. You know, they said that they weren't able to to staff it properly. Uh, maybe there was some profit uh, issues going on, but either way, the hospital said, "You know what? <clears throat> We're done. We're closed." Uh, you know, uh, they sent their doctors and nurses to other hospitals in the area. And they literally just, you know, locked their doors, basically. And the politicians in that county are now trying to sue um, this hospital for closing their doors. So then what that means is, is that the public, the politicians, the government, the people in that area want these hospitals open. They want them to operate. Right. And in a lot of cases, what happens is the hospitals say, well, listen. That's cool. You want us here? You want us taking care of you guys? Well, guess what? We're going to need some money or we're going to need something, right? And in a lot of situations, that, that is exactly what will happen. Um, the, the state will step in and help fund uh, these hospitals and this sort of thing. And so Medical Properties Trust is, um, is, is confident that if, um, that if Prospect uh, does, does, you know, no longer wants these hospitals, they can very easily sell. Matter of fact, uh, they have entered into an agreement, hasn't completed yet, uh, to sell, I think, two or three of their hospitals uh, across Pennsylvania and Connecticut. So, um, you know, it's, it's again, it's, it's a viable business, um, and it's something that's, that's needed, and it's not going away anytime soon. Of course, like I said, you know, the problem is, is, well, what happens if they sell to uh, this other uh, uh, operator and the operator now has to renegotiate the lease agreement with Medical Properties Trust and they somehow get away with paying less rent than what Prospect was paying? That's that's fine. Right. Um, that's that's possible. Uh, usually in situations like this, Medical Properties Trust has. Uh, things written in the agreement that says that in case something like this happens, the operator has to either um, reimburse us or the operator has to actually purchase the hospital back from us. And so um, Medical Properties Trust right now is assuming that they're not going to receive any rent from these guys, um, but they are assuming that they will either be able to sell th this hospital or uh, get another operator. In there. Okay. With all that being said, uh, let's take a look at the actual numbers. And so uh, one quick thing about this is I have um, land um, separated out from real estate. I didn't do that in my last analysis. I did it this time only because typically land values don't change, right? Unless you are adding land uh, to the portfolio or you're selling land. Uh, the land value really doesn't change. And I thought that that will be um, helpful in the analysis. Um, either way, this is what I came up with, right? So um, currently, uh, 2022, 
lands at 1948 so leaving that's that static okay um, if they do sell these hospitals of course that number is going to come down and we're looking at some statistical ranges here right so anywhere from 16 um, all the way up to you know 22 23 um, is where it can go I'm just gonna leave it flat okay um, I, I I don't think they're gonna do any big deals to increase it. Um, I do think they can definitely um, decrease it for sure. So maybe we'll play around with that in a second. All right, uh, real estate. This is actually uh, real estate holdings uh, as well as um, uh, mortgages and things of that nature. All right, so on average, this thing does increase. Um, but we're going to uh, decrease it just a bit. It was 12575 and I have it listed right now at 11891 uh, which is, you know, sort of in the middle of the range um, from our, um, our options here. All right, cash. Like I said, I got that way wrong um, last time I did this analysis. And so um, to correct that, I'm going to assume that cash is going to increase, especially because we know that they're potentially going to be selling uh, some of these properties. So um, cash was 235. I predicted it to be 150 last year. And so we're gonna go ahead and increase that 312. A lot of the reason why I, I did that is because historically uh, cash has fallen, you know? So um, as of right now, we're gonna have that increase. I see where it goes. Okay, receivables. Uh, this is rent. This is interest, right? Now, when they do these, when they do these write downs of um, of rent received, right, um, of future rent being received, um, that does affect the receivables, right? And so the question becomes, you know, how how large of a, a write down is this going to be? Um, and how's that going to affect um, their, their receivable? So uh, I left it flat. Um, historically, it has increased um, and the numbers are just really all over the place. And that's the reason why you see such a, a big difference here, uh, anywhere from 630 all the way up to almost uh, 13. So um, leaving it flat right now, again, we can come back and play with that. All right, investments. I think this is the, the biggest one, uh, the largest uh, variable anyway. Um, and so this is going to be all of the joint ventures uh, that they've done uh, where they don't own properties outright, but they go into partnerships with other companies and other investors to take a percentage ownership uh, in these properties. And then in return, they receive, uh, uh, you know, uh, an, an investment return. Right. So as you can see, historically, a number has, has been uh, just kind of crazy. Um, and a lot of that is because, you know, they've gotten really big into doing these these joint ventures and, and they, they've talked to quite a bit about it. Um, again, if they get these hospitals sold, um, then there's a good chance that they're going to take that cash and put it back into some sort of joint venture versus, versus going out and buying um, a, a brand new uh, hospital or, or something like that. So as of right now, we're going to increase this. And I want to say right here too, this is the reason why um, you can be wrong on one of these numbers, but still net out the same as far as the prediction goes is because um, if you have investments increasing, um, then you may have uh, receivables uh, decreasing, right? Or, you know, you may have land decreasing, but then you have investments increasing. So. I'm okay with where that number is. It's not at the highest end of the range, um, but uh, again, you know, assuming that these things uh, increase, I, I, I definitely don't see it dropping all the way down to 561. Uh, in order for that to happen, they would have to exit uh, these joint ventures. And if they exit any of these joint ventures, uh, then that means that they're going to be selling their interest, which is going to drastically in increase uh, cash. So I think it's going to, net out is what i'm saying right okay and then uh the other investments that's going to be all of their loans all of their derivatives all of uh the the financial instruments and things that they uh involve in the interest rate swaps which is another uh big story right now because 
um, you know, in their contracts, as interest rates increase, medical properties trust uh, charge their customers or their lessees more money, more rent, right? But a lot of times that is capped, meaning that it can't go higher than, let's say, 3%. I forget what the actual number is. I talked about it in the last video. Um, and so, you know, Medical Properties Trust also has to pay interest on loans. And right now, I think they have something like a billion dollars of variable rate loans, meaning that as interest rates rise, the interest rate on that loan continues to rise. And so what they do is they go out and they purchase these derivatives, they purchase these interest rate swaps so that as interest rates go up, they make money on their investments to help cover the extra cost um, of, of interest payments. And so um, historically, you know, that number has increased, which makes sense. Um, it was at uh, 560 um, currently. And so um, we're increasing that uh, to 720, which kind of in the middle of the range. I don't see this number decreasing um, anytime soon. Um, so from my perspective, we either leave it the same or we uh, or we increase it. So uh, that gives us a, a total asset balance of 20 and it was 19. So uh, that means we have a growing um, asset uh, balance sheet which you know is not out of the realm of possibility um but it doesn't mean that it can't it can't fall a little bit either so we may look at that here in a second all right uh debt um again i talked about this before you know with interest rates being up so high um hard to imagine anyone is out there shopping uh, for debt but it's a possibility you know um the other thing to keep in mind is looking at this the, the statistical range um there is not a lot of difference uh, from the top and bottom here, right? So you see 97, 99, 12, and 12. So that means that this number doesn't move around a whole lot, right? And so uh, in 2022, it was 11. And so we're going to increase this to uh, 1290, which is, you know, I guess the middle of the range, uh, but definitely a, a high, higher end. Um, you know, that number can definitely um, stay the same. Um, I don't think they have any debt coming off the books uh, right now. I know in like in a year or so, they definitely have uh, some debt coming off the books. But right now, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, all right. And then deferred revenue. Um, this is money that they, again, they have to book um, as revenue when the customer or when the lessee signs the lease. And again, this is just an accounting thing, but it does matter because what happens is, is that they signed the lease, so they booked the revenue, but the operator has not moved into the building yet. So they haven't, haven't actually started paying rent. And so um, this deferred revenue is literally cash that they have on hand that they can't touch, right? Um, and so that does get listed as a liability. It counts against um, the cash and assets that we have up here. Okay, so, um, you know, um, pretty big, you know, difference here. You know, 22 at the low end, 33 at the high end. Um, it was 27 in 2022. Um, you know, my thoughts on this are that unless they have uh, some new uh, lessee that comes in, uh, this number is either going to uh, stay the same or it's going to increase. Um, the only way it decreases is if um, you have a lessee that, you know, a big one, right, that has just now started paying rent. And they don't have anything like that that I know of. Uh, there's definitely some construction in progress. Um, so, you know, maybe um, if some of that construction gets done um, soon, then maybe we could see a, a drop, but I don't think it's going to be a big enough drop to even make a difference. And this is a small number in the grand scheme of things anyway. All right. So that puts total liabilities at 12, one, uh, 2022 is with 11. So not a big difference here. Again, it's been kind of up and down the last couple of years. And so, um, it can really kind of go anyway. All right. Uh, the net, uh, balance is really what I was focused on here. As you can see, um, you know, a, a very wide 
uh, range here. Uh, at the low end, uh, three million. At the high end, thirteen million. And so I got it right around uh, the eight million mark, which I think is you know, I'm comfortable with that, right? Um, it was eight million three in twenty twenty two, and it's been about that. Yeah, it's been that for the last two years, and so um, you know I'm happy with that declining a little bit. Um, again, it can potentially statistically get down to that, that 3 million mark, but, um, hard to see. All right. Another thing, um, I didn't queue this up, but maybe I did. And I just don't remember. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Um, so yeah, so net, uh, can get all the way down to, to three. Um, uh, I'm comfortable at the eight though. Um, the other thing to mention is there is a share buyback, uh, plan. Now, historically, uh, this company, like, like most in their, uh, line of business issue shares or sell shares of stock in order to fund investments, right? And so shares have historically increased. Um, and that's what you see here. So in 2020, the share count was 541. 2021, it increased to 596. And in 2022, it increased uh, to 597. Now, what the CEO has said on multiple occasions is that when the share price is high, he will sell shares um, to raise money to fund investments. Uh, but they have uh, decided that um, while the share price is low, they're going to use additional uh, cash that they have on hand uh, to purchase shares, meaning that the share uh, count um, ought to drop, right? Um, and, you know, again, this is something that the CEO has talked about many times, which is he refuses uh, to sell shares at these low prices. He thinks that uh, the stock price for Medical Properties Trust is way too low. Um, he has not said that recently, but he said that in the past. And I can't imagine that his attitude will change. Like I said, this guy seems very uh, serious about the stock price because like I said, his, his money is, is really tied to it. So um, I think they're definitely gonna um, repurchase the shares. They have something like, I think 400, thousand or maybe 400 million dollars um uh, uh stacked up uh, to purchase these shares and it makes all the sense to me that they'll do that uh while the stock price is low um now so uh what that means is is that um with uh, the shares at 597 in 2022 and with our range of statistical uh data points here um, I think that it can get down to the 565 number, the lower end of the range. Um, hard for me to imagine uh, them not buying these shares hand over fist if they really uh, believe um, in where they think the stock price ought to be. Um, what I do know is that they're definitely not going to uh, sell shares at these prices. So, um, being that there's not much difference between 565 and 566, I figured just go with the lower number, right? Uh, what that does do is it actually makes the dividend payment cheaper because they're paying a dividend on less shares, right? And so um, based on this information, also too, uh, the dividend has increased uh, every year um for the last i think nine years or something like that uh dollar 08 in 2020 dollar 12 uh 2021 and currently uh the dividend is sitting at a dollar 16. now um i don't think honestly that they're going to uh, increase uh the dividend this year uh, but statistically speaking um they can and they have so why not, right? <laughs> so, so again, we're assuming a dividend of a dollar twenty. Uh, again, doubt that happens, but even if it does, they can still cover it. Like I said, two hundred percent based on uh, the current um, the current uh, net profit uh, prediction. All right.
So we already kind of talked about this uh, with a stock price at eight dollars and eighty cents. That currently uh, puts our predicted price to book at point six two. Um, if we look back uh, historically, point six two is the lowest it has been. But last year, point seven one was the lowest it's been in the last three years. So um, you know, there's no real big surprise there. Uh, however, it can be said that point six two is crazy low really for any stock unless you think that the assets aren't worth near uh what the company says they are um and that's hard to believe again you know for something like that to happen we're talking about hospitals across the board uh going out of business um and you know, having to then um, sell those. I mean, it would have to be something like, man, maybe 50% of, of their portfolio um, for that to happen. And the, the market is predicting that that is what's going to happen. And that's that's how you get a price to book this, this low. And I think that's how you get a short interest that high. Technically, any time a stock is below a price to book of one, it is a screaming buy. And just based on the history of this thing, um, I think that right now it is definitely a buy. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it is definitely undervalued. Um, the one thing I do want to mention here, and I think I said this before, but I'll say it again is that uh, this worst case scenario here of a net book value of 3 million, okay, uh, puts the price to book at 1.56 at $8.80, meaning that historically speaking, that 1.56 is the high for the year, right? So worst case scenario, if the net value of the company is really this 3 million up here, that makes this $8.80 right now the absolute high that it will touch in 2023. Uh, and we know that the stock price has definitely been higher than that in 2023. And so I don't see a lot of downside potential. Uh, doesn't mean that we can't get there. Just to, just to play around with it here, I was reading an article that said that uh, some short sellers think that stock price is not worth more than like four bucks. Uh, if that is the case, um, again, worst case scenario, that would put um, the price to book at 0.71, which is the historical low um, for this particular uh, company, right? Meaning that it is, ain't going lower than, than $4, um, historically speaking. So, um, again, very possible, right? But um, I don't see that happening right now. So. Again, at eight dollars and eighty cents, uh, I'm saying that this thing is undervalued. Um, now let's see if we can find um, um, a fair value for this thing. So, if you go up to twelve, um, that gives us again. This is worst case scenario. That gives us a price to book of two, right? And it's been two before, but it's also been declining year over year. So. The idea that it gets back to two, um, again, worst case scenario, uh, kind of hard to follow. Ten, um, I think is is very close uh, to, again, a high uh, for 2023. If you assume worst case scenario, all right. Fifteen uh, puts us at a predicted price to book of one, um, but again. Looking back over the history of this thing, the high for the year has always been above a price to book of one, which makes perfect sense. So, get it up to 18. Um, that gives us a price to book of 1.27, 21, 22 gets us to 156, okay? So um, here's my thing about that though, right? At a stock price of 22, 
um, 156 is, you know, in the range of where it has been historically. Um, but let's play around a little bit with these numbers and see what difference that makes. Um, the one thing that uh, we talked about was real estate maybe coming down. Receivables coming down. Uh, investments coming down. Let's just assume they don't do any new joint ventures. Um, we'll leave the derivatives up. Let's assume that maybe they're losing money on their derivatives. But we don't want to go too crazy. All right. Uh, that gives us a net uh, book value of 47, roughly. And so at 22, that gives us a price to book of 265, um, which is way too high historically. Let's get back down to 18, 16, 15, 14. And so that gives us uh, $14, okay? And again, looking at this net of 47 and looking at our st statistical range, that, that's at the low end, right? So it's a bit higher than the low end. Um, and that still gives us uh, a high of 14 uh, for 2023. So again, um, I definitely um, see this thing uh, getting there. I'm not willing to go as high as 22. I think that's just um, asking for a lot from this particular stock right now. Uh, we know that over the last three years, we've seen this thing, you know, climb 100% for sure, right? Um, that will put us at 16. But again, uh, the only way for that valuation to make sense is we'd have to have a higher uh, book value. And, um, you know, like I said, I think we, we, we've talked about it, like we can definitely get there, um, but definitely some things have to, um, have to really um, go right for that to happen. something like that all right uh income uh we know that this company does not uh trade on the uh, profit loss but take a look at it anyway um one of the biggest things um that i was interested in uh was the income right um as much as i wanted to uh, increase the income. I just, there's just no way for it to, to happen. And you see it drops just a bit, um, from 2021 and 2022. Um, so I have it dropping down to 1372 because I just couldn't see it increasing to 17. Um, I think based on kind of what's going on right now, something, um, you know, maybe if if they they turn around um, this this whole prospect thing in, in Pennsylvania and Connecticut and start realizing um, some rent from that thing, then yeah, I think I think we we can see a growth in, in income. Um, the CEO talked in in the um, well, maybe not the CEO, but one of the officers talked about uh, the fact that right now they're anticipating not receiving any rent at all, none. And so anything that they get out of the deal, I think is going to be a, a, a plus. The, I want to say that Prospect also owns hospitals in California and one other state. I can't remember right now, but those other hospitals are doing well. You know what I mean? It's just those those few in Pennsylvania, Connecticut that are, that are having some trouble. So um, obviously there is some value um, there to be had. But again. I'm not going to want to play around with increasing it. Okay, uh, investment income. Um, going to keep that one pretty flat. It was 592. 
And so uh, we're looking at it staying flat. You know, number has been all over the place. And again, this is all due to the uh, joint ventures and things like that that they've been in, involved in. Um, you know, we can drop it all the way down to 284. It could be as high as 5 million. I don't see that happening. We're just gonna leave it flat, right? All right, uh, interest, uh, have that increasing a bit. Um, property uh, expenses, they, they do have some things that they have to pay for, uh, but not a lot. And, and a lot of this is, I think, administrative, really, um, not, not necessarily like maintenance. All right, um, salaries, you know, why not increase them a little bit, okay? Um, debt costs, uh, I think I talked about this. Um, these are the, uh, what do you call it, the, the items listed as other assets that I'm including um, as an expense because, again, it is a cost that they have to pay. They just haven't paid it now, right? They will at some point. Um, and so we have that one basically flat uh, just because, you know, the numbers really kind of been all over the place. Um, See, even you know statistically, I mean, it's the numbers so so varied that you know statistically they can see a gain from this, which I don't know how that's possible, but you know statistically speaking, I guess it can work. Uh, taxes. Um, this is a REIT, and so they don't generally pay a lot of tax. Any money that's not uh, sent out to the shareholders, um, it can be taxed. And so um, that number's kind of been all over the place. Um, expecting that to uh, decrease, um, you know, if we see a sale of uh, some properties, then, you know, maybe that number uh, jumps up some. But honestly, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. All right. And then investors, uh, these are persons that uh, own a piece of medical properties trusts that aren't like shareholders you know they're investors and so medical properties trust pays them out um, a percentage uh every every year every every quarter so that's what's represented here uh that number was uh 12 uh this recent uh year and so we're looking at that uh, increasing or staying, staying about the same, right? So that gives us a net profit of 1347, which is a drop from the 15 that it was um, last year. Um, this is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm remembering now. In the last video, so I went back and rewatched it. I had a really hard time um, believing that net profit was going to increase by 50%. So much so that I spent time going over and over the income and expenses, trying to get the net profit to less than 50%. But guess what? It was, it actually went up by 50%, which is crazy. So, um, <laughs> it's like, it's another, it's another example of st statistics and, and numbers and math, you know, winning any, e even though they don't seem to make sense sometimes and you just can't imagine how that's going to happen. It happens and so um kind of looking at the same thing here worst case scenario they lose almost uh three million don't see that happening but it's a statistical possibility right um 11 19 and then uh almost six which is a crazy number uh, as far as net profit goes but um i have this uh slightly down where did I get that from? Oh, okay, okay. No, this is, yeah. So 13 is at the low end of the range. Uh, well, I'll say in the middle, actually, if you include this, this negative number. So it's in the middle of the range, which I'm, I'm okay with. All right. Uh, earnings per share. This is actually uh, the amount of money that they earn in profit uh, divided by the number of shares. And so the stock price ought to move by that dollar amount at least, right? And so earnings per share two dollars and thirty eight cents. It was two fifty two in twenty twenty two, a dollar seventy in twenty one, and a dollar thirty two in twenty twenty. So um, you know, why not have it decrease just a bit, right? And um and I and I'm I'm comfortable with that. You know, statistically it can be anywhere from this negative five 
up to nine. So two again is really kind of in the middle of that range. I'm comfortable with that, right? Okay, so the PE, um, which is the current price divided by the earnings per share, right? Means that people are willing to pay six times the earnings uh, for this particular company at the current price of go ahead here, sixteen dollars. Okay, now here's why this is important. Okay, again, the company doesn't trade on the P on the the profit loss statement, but just to look at some numbers, um, so PE of six point seven one historically, right? So at the low it was three nine three last year at the high it was 959 11 and 13 in 2021 and then 9 and 18 in 2020 meaning that this 671 is um not the lowest it's been but it's just a bit higher than the low from last year and really kind of you know in the middle of where that uh that nine was so what I like to do is, um, is because if you look at this, right, it has dropped considerably over the last three years, 18, 13, and nine. So my assumption here is that, uh, again, the company doesn't trade on this, but let's just look at this. 671 makes sense for me, right? If we're talking about coming down from 959, all right? Let's come back here and play around with this a little bit. Let's put it at 15. That gives us 629. See, it doesn't move around too much. Let's go to the current price of $8.80. That gives us a PE of 369, which is lower uh, than the lowest uh, PE uh, from last year um, and lower than the PE for the last three years, right? So, um, Again, this eight dollars and eighty cents uh it really does undervalue the stock historically um we go back to maybe like a fourteen that gives us a p e of five eight seven which puts us really in line with uh where we were um last year, which fairly values the the, the stock so um at this point, what I'm comfortable saying here is that um Right now at eight dollars and eighty cents, um, you know, we are really touching um what I think is the low for the year. And um I only see upside from here, you know. Um, you know, getting down to a stock price uh, of six dollars. Um even like I said, in the worst case scenario, that, that fairly values the, the stock at um at one time's uh, price to book. So, you know, can it get down to six? Yes, it can, but again, that's a worst case scenario, okay? So, um, let's see what seven gets us. Seven gets us to, so what I'll say is, I'll say that the price can go anywhere from seven, and I'll say, let me look at where 17 puts us. Of call, right? I'll say anywhere from seven to eighteen dollars is my range. Seven to eighteen dollars is my range. We're currently uh down in the stock right now. Definitely gonna look to add um some more uh via options, uh especially now that the price is so low, really hoping to get a nice premium on those options.